I really feel like I am helping do something for this country. When you get down to it, it's very, very simple. This is all about us. I'm Brian Bradshaw. I'm here with Boone Pickens. This is part of an ongoing series of Boone helping to educate the American public on some pressing and current energy issues. So the supply side of oil is clearly not a free market because you've got 30 percent of the supply that's controlled by a cartel. A cartel with its stated purpose is to to influence and control the oil prices. And they're, they're controlling those oil prices, I'm guessing, not for our best interest. Well, no, the, the OPEC has one resource, oil. And I would, if I was running OPEC, I would probably operate very much like they do. I mean, why do I want to run in, oversupply the market, drop the price? That doesn't make sense. I have a finite resource uh, within the OPEC uh, cartel and they need to protect it and all and they have very high unemployment in their countries and they have to help their people consequently they have to have a certain price to meet their social commitments in their countries it, it, that's what it comes down to and so they will supply the market at the level that keeps the price in a, a range that they have to have. And they've told us that. I mean, they're very clear. They're upfront about it. They haven't been mysterious and, and all. They're not trying to take advantage of the marketplace. They're trying to protect the resource that they're, they have in their country and be able to service the people in the country. And that's the supply side. The demand side is equally as influenced by government policies around the world. Am I correct there? Yes, sure it is. And, and so, and here in the United States, we do not address the demand side of the issue. It just, you say, well, let the market take care of it. You need to understand the, the energy business globally to see how you should operate in the United States. So if I understand you correctly, supply is heavily influenced by a cartel who's manipulating prices. Demand is heavily influenced by every government around the world, whether it's ours implementing cafe standards and taxing some forms of gasoline and diesel, in fact, doing it at different levels to incent different activity. And there's governments around the world that are actually subsidizing demand, 25 cents a gallon in some of the OPEC countries. So if you have a, a fuel that's got that much intervention by governments around the world, why, why do our politicians and why do people still think Th there's a free market to work with. Because they don't know what, they don't know anything about energy. I've said that I can't have a five minute conversation, a, a real conversation on energy in Washington because I'll run out of what they know in about three minutes. Well, they never focus on it. They don't, it's not a concern of theirs and all. And here you have the tool available to the United States to have uh, recover the economy on cheap energy. I'm taking you back to the idea that no, that's not going to lower the price for you. It gives you some security in the event that something happens and in, in we don't live in a fungible market. In the event that you have an actual resource war breakout or something like that, you'd have some security. But um, taking you back to your point about, well, no, that doesn't necessarily decrease the price since oil is fungible. That's why you need natural gas. That's why you gotta introduce a new fuel. Sure, the, the way you control or your destiny is to use your resources. Use all your resources and understand what's available to you. We haven't even approached doing that. I mean, go back to where our government, they kind of just let things drift along. You know, $2 gasoline was unacceptable. Well, we got it and it was acceptable. And then it moved, moved on. So the next hurdle was two fifty. then it was $3. You've moved on, you've moved on and the public accepts it. We have done a better job. Cafe standards, no question, that's helped uh, in the overall use of, uh, of gasoline and diesel. But as we go forward from here, let's really understand, let's understand uh, energy in America better than any other country. Let's, let's study it, educate ourselves to it, and see how we're going to handle it. But what you'll want to do is use your own resources. I think this is an important point. I'd like to summarize. The increased oil production we have from this country is a good thing. And make no mistake, that is a good thing. It's it very good. 
But if people have the misconception that by the United States growing our oil production, it's going to solve our energy problems, then they're misinformed. And for example, our oil supply has grown here by by 50 percent over the last three years. And what has that done for the price of gasoline and diesel? I mean, our consumers are still paying world prices. They're still paying. Full sure, you are because we're importing oil from the Middle East, uh, Africa, Venezuela, that comes in at the global price and that comes into our system, that pretty well sets the price. The price is being set, one more time, by OPEC. Well, and this takes and us back to the Pickens plan. This takes us back to the original idea that you were trying to inform people of in 2008, which is you've got to introduce a new fuel to the mix. You've got to do something to break the, the price the, the price kind of stranglehold that we're stuck in now with OPEC. And the only way to do that is a new fuel. And, and the unbelievable is it, we have the fuel in America. All we have to do is inform ourselves, get educated on how to use the fuel. It's cleaner, cleaner, abundant, and domestic, and, and available, cheaper. and cheaper. I mean, you, you cannot put a better, uh, you know, spin on anything. If it's ours, it's abundant, it is cheaper and cleaner. How can you beat that? Is it realistic to think the rest of the world can replicate what the United States has been able to, to accomplish in these last few years? Any place that you have oil or gas production, you have source rock. Okay, now, will the source rock be as uh, abundant as it is in the United States? I don't know. You would think so. Why would it be any different? And so that's going to be available to the world. But that, to take oil and gas out of the source rock, is expensive. So don't have the idea that you're going to have, you know, it's all going to happen. We're going to have plenty of oil and it's only going to cost $25 a barrel and you're going to have $1 gasoline. I think a lot of people, that's how they're thinking about it. Yeah, they need to look at the cost of recovery or finding costs in the source rock. And it's expensive, no question. You know, people say, well, you have shale oil uh, on the western slope of the Rockies in, uh, in Colorado. And all of that is tremendous amount of oil. When is that going to come on? It'll come on around $200 a barrel is what's going to happen mm -hmm. or, or something greater than that. It's expensive to recover the oil. If you look at the oil sands up at Athabasca in Alberta, yes, there is 250 billion barrels of oil. As much oil there as you have in Saudi Arabia. It's right there. It's all available to the United States. Boone, thank you for your time. I think this has been very helpful and educational. Thank you.